Hello, this is Thursday's Mente Meditation. Uh, I will be using this time to wrestle with our gospel text for Sunday, which is uh, from Mark 1st and uh, verses 9 to 15. Uh, I'm going to read the text first. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent Jesus out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. So if you have attended my Bible study before, um, this time is going to look uh, kind of like that. So we're, uh, I'm not necessarily getting to a single conclusion, but we're just going to wrestle with the different parts of the text. Uh, so that would be an invitation to each of us to see which parts kind of speak to your life, your needs, uh, your spiritual thirst today. So Mark's version of the baptism story is uh, juxtaposed with the story of Jesus' temptation and, and then immediately follows uh, the, the story of uh, Jesus' beginning of his ministry. So Jesus did not jump directly from baptism and glory to the work phase, but temptation kind of had to come in between. And there is the themes of desert and wild animals and Satan, uh, which all represent the, the battle or the test of faith that other Gospels will, will name more clearly. Um, so it seems that for Mark, the significance of each one of these events, the baptism, the temptation, and the beginning of Jesus' ministry kind of um, uh, comes from the other two. They're all interrelated. Um, so Jesus was baptized, and we've reflected on that in the past couple of weeks. In Mark, uh, typical Mark will tell us that at once the Spirit drove him to the wilderness. Uh, there is something intriguing about Jesus being driven, being taken out to the wilderness. It's almost like he didn't have a choice about it. Um, I'm reading a book about leading change, actually. I should have it somewhere here, uh, called Another Way. And the authors uh, speak about purpose and call in uh, one of the chapters. And they say that sometimes we choose a purpose and other times a purpose kind of chooses us. And then our life experiences will prepare us for that purpose. Uh, yesterday, Pastor Wes asked me why I chose to come to Sacramento, and my answer was just that. Uh, I didn't really choose Sacramento, but I felt like it chose me. Uh, and it seems like the same thing happened with Jesus here in this text. The Spirit drove him to the wilderness uh, where he was tempted. Uh, and from where the beginning of his ministry started. So. Uh, wilderness, of course, has a plethora of meanings. Uh, here in this text, we're told that uh, it is the place where, where Satan, wild animals, angels, uh, and God are all present. Um, we read in other Synoptic Gospels that uh, a more elaborate story of the temptation, where Jesus is tempted with food, possession, uh, authority, and he succeeds in overcoming all of those temptations. So while Mark is not interested in detail, doesn't tell us what the temptation is, he just tells us Jesus was tempted, like one simple sentence. Uh, we just ask like, what what is Mark getting to? Um, so it's almost like, all right, Jesus went to the wilderness, check. He was tempted by Satan, check. Angels waited on him, check. 
Um, and then the result of all that is Jesus going out and proclaiming the good news. Um, so sometimes we have this image of Jesus who like just knows everything and, and is ready to be left in a barren desert, barren desert and, and just survive it. But this passage will um, show us that there, there's a process involved. There is like an experiential element to being in the desert. Uh, it's not like um, it's not like an extreme wilderness challenge that Jesus accepted in order to show his spiritual muscles, but an actual temptation. And, and I think maybe Mark's silence on naming the types of temptations or the specific ways in which Jesus was tempted is kind of like a call to inclusiveness. Um, or, or maybe we can read it as um, a deeper interpretation of what spiritual temptation is rather than the primal um, tendency to um, to be attached to things like food, uh, power, and possessions. And notice that Mark does not record any victory for Jesus as Matthew and Luke do. He doesn't tell us that he, you know, succeeded to overcome this temptation. And this might imply that this temptation will continue throughout his ministry, almost like um, he's living an extended wilderness experience. Um, I just wanted to point out that the uh, various paradoxical elements in this story, the emotions in this passage, uh, you have the wild animals that are scary, uh, but then there are the angels, and, and then there's the voice of God, empowering, comforting, and assuring. Uh, there's also the struggle between solitude and communal purpose. Uh, so Jesus steps away from everything at the very beginning of his ministry to just listen to God. Uh, but then we see that he's not really totally alone. Besides angels and Satan and wild animals, uh, God is there with him. And this is where Jesus is kind of like inspired to, uh, to a purpose and a vocation and a call. Um, so we see how call and purpose are wrapped up in the everyday struggles uh, and, and joys and just surprises of living. And uh, call and purpose are not only for the religious leaders, they're for everyone. Um, and they often point us to something that's beyond ourselves um, that's pointing towards others. So the questions I would like to leave us with today are, uh, what are uh, the, our experiences and struggles leading us to? Is the Spirit driving us to, into something that we don't know? Uh, are we being taken out to the wilderness? Are we being called um, to more um, to be more in tune to our call and purpose? Uh, are there angels waiting on us. So where do you see yourself in this story? Um, I would love to hear your answers, comments, feedback in the, in the comments section. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening and I wish you all a great rest of your afternoon.